Mir was a space station built by the Russians. The impression you got when you opened up the hatch and went into Mir for the first time were twofold. One was the smell. There's a smell of a bit like an oily garage. Maybe a little bit of must, because we did have mold in, in, on the mirror. And then uh, the other impression is clutter. And so as you go through, you're go basically, it's like going into the esophagus of someone's throat. After about six weeks of being on the station, I've been doing my experiments. I'm very happy. I get up on June the 25th. Vasily Tsiblev, uh, the commander, and uh, Alexander Lazutkin, the flight engineer, had been using um, radio control equipment to fly a cargo ship called Progress that weighs about seven tons into the Mir station using a TV looking at the station. As I look at Vasily's TV screen, I can see that the orientation is all wrong for a, a proper docking to take place. And Sasha, the flight engineer, says to me, Michael Krabble. Michael Krabble. And he means the Soyuz spacecraft, which was joined onto the end of the station, what is that, at that point, our lifeboat. But I understood, because of the emergency in which he said it, that he meant, go there to save your life. And as I float through, I feel the whole space station shudder and, and move around me. I'm pretty sure this may be my last breath because I'm looking at the thin, three millimeter thick aluminum walls. We're just waiting for them to part. Those klaxons go off when there's a, a pressure leak. And then I felt my ears popping, which means in this case, the air is leaving the space station. And there was a whistling sound coming from the spectrum module. In 23 minutes, if we did nothing, we would start to go unconscious. Sasha comes to me and, and uh, just doesn't say a word. He just feverishly starts trying to remove cables leading into the spectrum module. Sasha looked around for a large hatch that could be put in place, and we just put it on, and as it went on, it kind of went and sucked in. But then, because the station had been hit by the progress, we were now tumbling and rolling. And at that point, the solar arrays had no electric power, and the batteries were giving out. There wasn't a fan running, none of the carbon dioxide removal was working, no oxygen regeneration, and no, no communications with Moscow or anybody else. It was a totally dead station. This is not something you see in movies where it all gets solved instantly by some brainy chap. It took probably six hours. We used the Soyuz spacecraft and just fired the jet to stop the space station tumbling and rolling. And then, wonderfully, we came into uh, sunlight after this, and all of a sudden, the fans started to come on, and the lights came on, and I said, Vasily, we've done it. However, for the next month, the station was inoperable in any normal sense. It could just sustain our lives and nothing else. When finally the shuttle came in October, I was really, really quite happy to see them. And as we backed away from the Mir station, I looked at it and thought, I don't really mind if I don't ever see that again. 